you guys, so this is part two of my general Q&A answers, my study and PhD in university answers are yet to come in a separate video, but without further ado, let's just bang on with the rest of the questions I have written down here. Did you always want to be a classical historian? Um, when I was younger, I definitely wanted to be an Egyptologist. I wanted to study Egypt specifically. My interest in Greece came later. I also, for a long time, wanted to be an archaeologist, like I've mentioned before, so didn't necessarily want to specifically study from the ancient texts, which is what I do now. I've never really been interested in modern history, however. Favourite Doctor Who and companions from Doctor Who. My favourite doctors are Tom Baker, Christopher Eccleston, who I think is woefully underappreciated, and David Tennant. And my favourite companion is Rose. What can I say? I am obvious. Uh, is there a Greek myth retelling that you haven't read yet that you would like to read? I would like to read a retelling of Medusa, which I haven't read before. Do you have any retelling pet peeves? I do and I don't. I think retellings are open for whatever you want to do with them and what I don't like is retellings that try to stay as close to the myth as possible but make stupid mistakes or miss important aspects out for no literary or narrative reason. Because the thing is, I think so few people are actually exposed to the original myths and classics is still very much a topic that seems to be associated with the upper classes. It's not really taught in state school. If you want to learn things like Latin at school, you have to go to a private school, generally speaking. And I worry that the general public aren't getting the real stories. And I don't like the thought of it being an exclusive thing. I don't see why people should be misinformed about these things. But then I, I do really like retellings that go completely wacky and wild and are quite open with their intentions not to stick to the originals and just kind of use what they want. I just wish everyone had equal knowledge of the originals. On a scale from 1 to 10, how awesome is Xenu as a subscriber? Obviously 10 you've been commenting for years and super regularly and always engaged with my videos. That's really nice. What more could I possibly want? Have you read Percy Jackson and do you have any recommendations from middle grade series based on ancient myths? I haven't read the Percy Jackson series. I haven't read any middle grade books that deal with ancient myths for years. If I have read any, I can't remember all the books I read as a child off the top of my head so I don't really have any recommendations for you other than say asterisks and obelix which don't deal with myths but do kind of play around with Roman history. How do you feel about veganism? What persuaded you to become a vegetarian? And do you have any facts to persuade people to become a vegetarian? I have a whole video about becoming a vegetarian on my channel which I'll link down below. I simply became a vegetarian because I didn't want to eat animals. In my head that was not okay. I, that made me sad. I became a vegetarian when I was 12. I'd wanted to be one since I was about 10. So there was quite simplistic reasoning going on there. And that's still my basic reason for being a vegetarian, as I'm still one today. Veganism's great. I'm not a vegan. I also don't have any facts to persuade anybody to become a vegetarian. We all know meat is animals. That either convinces you not to eat them or it doesn't. And given that that's all that convinced me, I don't know how I would convince anybody else. What kind of music do you like and what are your favourite artists and bands? I virtually never listen to music if I'm being perfectly honest. <laughs> that's my... That's my answer to that question. Sorry. I do really like the soundtracks to Guardians of the Galaxy and The Boat That Rocked though. It's either one of those or it's like a classical playlist or the soundtrack to The Hobbit or The Lord of the Rings, but generally speaking only when I'm studying as kind of like nice background music to kind of keep my mind focused. What is your favourite book of all time? I mean, let's be perfectly honest, it's probably going to be a Harry Potter book, but if you don't want that answer, then it's either Sherlock Holmes, Going Postal by Terry Pratchett, The Penelope Ad by Mark Atwood, Aragon by Christopher Paolini, or Daphnis and Chloe by Longus. I refuse to narrow down. Do people recognise you in the street? <laughs> Um, no. I've met a few people that are subscribed to my channel just out and about, both when I was working in retail, a couple of people, and also when I've been in shops, people that have been working there, or once on a train. Do you write a diary or journal? No, not really. What is your favourite thing to eat? Pizza? Probably. If I had a choice between only ever listening to audiobooks or only ever reading massive bind up hardback books, what would I choose? Logistically, it's probably more sensible for me to say the bind up hardbacks because 
if it's for uni, I really need to be able to take annotations and go back and refer to sentences easily, so audiobooks wouldn't really work for that. But as somebody whose grandmother in her older age has gone blind, I, I find the idea of giving up audiobooks forever really upsetting. But this isn't real life, so top advice for starting booktube or for new booktube channels. I'm going to do a whole video about starting a YouTube channel, but if I had to make it simple, I would say be yourself, talk about what you love to talk about because people enjoy passion and that's what's most engaging in a channel, that's why I subscribe to a channel, it's really about the books they read, it's about the way they talk about those books. Although I do really like discovering people who discuss weird genres I don't read much of. And if you are thinking of starting but keep putting it off, you need to let go of this idea of perfection, which I know is consuming a lot of your minds. The best way to do booktube and to get better at it is to do it and to do the crappy videos and get better over time rather than preparing and expecting to start perfect from the beginning. And someone also asked about promoting your channel and I think the best way to do that is to engage with other content creators, engage with your subscribers, be there, be present, get involved in readathons and things like that. And if you want to make sure people find your videos, then use tags. Tags are good. Do you like Greek food? I love Greek food. What was your experience of reading in high school, in class and out of class? Well, out of class, I was an avid reader. I loved it. I definitely started to read less in my sort of final year and my first few years of uni, but I was always an avid reader. And and on reflection, I enjoyed most of the books I read at high school, but I think that was because I read them in my own time. Because who enjoys actually reading in class? Out loud, surrounded by other people and like skipping, like one person reads one page, one person reads the other page. That is not a way to read a book. Although I really, always really enjoyed analysing books. If you could adapt a book to film, which would it be? So, okay, this book does already have a film, but it's so bad, I really just want them to remake it in my lifetime. Please remake the Aragon film and then make the rest of them. Please do the whole series. It could be as epic as Lord of the Rings. I also think Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood and The Secret History by Donna Tartt would make quite good films. When and where do you read most often and are you quite self-disciplined? I'm actually not, I can't, I can't sit and read the same thing for hours at end. I apparently have quite a short attention span it would turn out because I'm usually reading multiple books at a time and I flip between them. I, I, I rarely read one thing for longer than an hour at a time. I have to go and do something else. I do read a lot on public transport though and I listen to audiobooks when I'm walking and in places like the supermarket or when I'm working out and I read a lot in my house. I read in my bed at night time. Favourite takeaway? Probably Indian if I'm sharing. If I'm by myself then either some sushi or a pizza. Typically are you reading one book at a time or multiple? Always multiple, no matter how much I try to narrow it down, always multiple. What lessons would you like to take the most at Hogwarts and what house would you be in? And Lauren believes she can guess my answer as well. Hufflepuff, without a doubt, I've never considered myself to be in any other house because they're the only house that takes everybody and that's the house I want to be a part of. For classes, either History of Magic or Care of Magical Creatures, History of Magic sounds terrible because of Professor Binns, but it would be fascinating! If you could change one thing about the Harry Potter series, what would it be? Colin Creevy. This is a spoiler, FYI. Colin Creevy's death, that's what I would change. How do you come up with ideas for content? Um, I always write anything I think down, so if at a later date I'm thinking of an idea and want to come back to it, um, I guess I'm just inspired by whatever I'm reading at the time or whatever I'm feeling strongly about at the time. Some of my videos, like a book haul or a reading wrap up or just generally a book review or a tag video or a standard format which is just all I need to have done is read some books or acquired some books to do. And just generally speaking I make all of my videos because I'm interested in the topic and I guess I just want to engage with other people on it. I guess I also like to promote positivity, awareness and acceptance on my channel as well. So I guess those are themes that inspire some of my content. I also want to spread the passion I have for reading in books with other people and get recommendations. So I plan on doing a video about dragon books for three reasons. Because I want to share some recommendations with you guys, because I want to talk about dragons, simply, and because I'm hoping you'll give me some recommendations. It's all entirely selfish. What book do you think every 
teenager or young women should read. I also got somebody asking what book should every woman in their 20s read. It's really difficult off the top of my head, but I mean, one book that just has had a really massive impact on me this year is Everyday Sexism by Laura Bates, and I think this is the third question I've given this as an answer to, but I think it's something that, you know, any women should read, especially young women. I think it's good to understand that your experiences aren't isolated and also understand what other people are going through and also know that there's people out there trying to fight against and dismantle the sexism that so often affects young women. What books have taught you the most about yourself or about others and the world around you? One of the books that definitely had a massive impact on me as a child and expanded my world was The Breadwinner by Deborah Ellis, which is the story of a young girl who was, I think, my age when I was reading the book, who lives in Taliban-ruled Afghanistan and is now a refugee and it's actually based on a real story. And that definitely taught me more about the world but also made me curious and eager to learn more about the world and understand other people's lives and I can't really think of a book that's made me <laughs> or helped me find myself which is probably ridiculously untrue because I have been an avid reader since I was a child. I think because I read so much as a child it probably all really affected me as a whole and it's hard to narrow it down as one. And the reason I keep saying as a child is because I feel like I've been a pretty consistent person since childhood. I've grown perhaps in confidence and my ability to really understand things but actually not that deep down I'm exactly the same person. I had a couple of people ask me questions along the lines of characters from books I'd like to spend time with. Or I think Luna Lovegood would be quite cool to hang out with. And this isn't a fictional character but given that I've recently read her essay and she narrated it I keep thinking it would have been cool to talk to Virginia Woolf. Actually almost any character from the Disc World books would be super cool to hang out with. Susan, Death, not because I'm dead, though, preferably any of the witches. The wee free men, I feel like we would, you know, bond. Jensia didn't put any pressure on me at all, but granted me the power to change three things about British politics. What would they be? Do you know what? I'm not going to get super complicated. I'm just going to go for three simple things I can think that would affect a lot of people right here, right now. Well, actually, I would scrap Trident. You know, that's a massive waste of money. First of all, I don't think nuclear deterrents work. I think they make you a target. And I also don't see the point in putting tons of money into a nuclear deterrent that you're not even going to apparently use when there's people in your country in incredible poverty. Like, what's the point in protecting a country that's swarming with poverty? And that's a massive waste of money. So I would get rid of that and put the money into healthcare and education. I would increase the minimum wage to something respectable along the lines of a living wage that was at least £10 an hour and I would make that mandatory for everybody. It doesn't matter if you're doing an apprenticeship or something like that. I think interns should be paid. Everyone would have to be paid. And lastly, I would increase progressive taxation. I would make there more brackets for tax. Like there's too few tax brackets. I there are people that are millions of pounds a year and you can tell me that, well, they worked hard, they earned their money. But are you also trying to tell me that somebody who's a nurse doesn't work hard? Wages and money and how much somebody has in our society do not equate to how hard they work. People that deliver post, people that work as nurses, your bin men, all of these integral jobs to society that are really hard and often involve physical labour do not pay that well. I would up the tax for people that earn millions of pounds and I would get rid of tax havens and stop rich people avoiding tax because I constantly hear from the media and newspapers, people complaining about people stealing our money through benefits you do realise that although it's not illegal, the government loses more money through rich people avoiding tax than people claiming benefits fraudulently. And the number of people claiming benefits fraudulently is minuscule. And I am so sick of people concentrating on that because of one example they have pulled out their arse. So that's what I would do. Those are the things I would change about British politics. Whilst I'm on a roll, I'd also make higher education free for everybody. Because I think it's absurd that people from England, Northern Ireland and Wales have to pay up to 9,000 
£2,000 a year to go to university in the UK. It makes me sick to my stomach. So I've chosen four things. I'm really sorry. And on that note, I think we're done here. Look out for my video answering your questions about PhD, undergraduate, masters, university, education, all that fun stuff. And until then, happy reading. Bye. Hi guys. So I come to you today to answer your questions from my Q&A video where I asked you to ask me any questions you wanted answered. 